70 miles west of Key West is a small group of islands that complete the Florida Keys. It's remote, yes, but it's otherworldly as well. The turquoise blues of the water, the white sand beaches, the wildlife, and the history, if it's not already on your bucket list, it should be. Welcome to Dry Tortugas National Park. While it's one of the least visited national parks, its beauty comes from stunning island magic, deep history, and true isolation. This group of islands was discovered by Juan Ponce de Leon in 1513. He named them Dry because there was no fresh water, and there were lots of sea turtles. Tortuga means turtle or tortoise in Spanish. It held several roles over the years, but it became a national park in 1992. Here are some of the best things to see and do when you visit Dry Tortugas National Park. There are two ways to get to Dry Tortugas, by seaplane or by boat. The seaplane offers a half day or a full day trip, but both with a hefty price tag. The advantage is that it's fast, allowing you to maximize your time on the island to explore. Most people take the ferry over that leaves from Key West early in the morning. It's about a two and a half hour ride each way, and while it's still pricey, they do provide you with a breakfast, snack, lunch, snorkel gear, and a five-hour boat trip on the ocean. The first thing you'll notice when you approach the island is Fort Jefferson. Fort Jefferson is the largest masonry structure in the Western Hemisphere. It's steeped in history. It was originally built in the 1800s to protect ship traffic in the Straits of Florida and in the Gulf of Mexico. While it was never actually completed, or ever even attacked, it was still a symbol of power for the U.S. back then. It's been everything from a prison to a coaling station, and it was used in both world wars. And now, it's open to tour and enjoy as part of this national park treasure. You can tour the three levels of the fort with an astonishing 2,000 brick arches on your own, or you can even take a guided 45-minute tour from a ranger. There are no rails, though, so you need to traverse carefully. The views are stunning. They're eye-popping, they're jaw-dropping, and you'll take many pictures. You can also walk out on the moat wall into the water. After 144 years, the deteriorating Tortugas Harbor Lighthouse, formerly known as the Garden Key Light at Dry Tortugas National Park, got a much needed rehabilitation. This four and a half million dollar project to restore and preserve the lighthouse had them deconstruct it and ship it to the mainland for a year of renovation. Fortunately for all those planning trips to visit, it has been reinstalled. The dry tortugas have some of the best snorkeling that Florida has to offer. For the day trippers, snorkeling around Garden Key is the best option. And for the beginning snorkeler, diving around the moat wall of the fort is fun. The water is shallow and calm, and there's lots to see between all the fish and historical artifacts. The South Coaling Docks Ruins as well as the North Coaling Docks ruins, both have coral and fish to explore by the old iron pilings. If you want to see even more coral, swim just west of Garden Key, where the buoys mark the end of the safe swimming zone. And if you just want to relax on the beautiful beach for a bit, you can do that too. It's quiet. The South Swim Beach has water that's crystal clear and wave-free. 
and you can gaze at Fort Jefferson while you take in the endless water and endless blue skies. Another fun thing to do, depending on when you visit, is to walk around Bush Key. It's just east of Garden Key, and depending on the time of year, if you can see the sandbar, you can get to it easily. It's a one mile loop of sheer island magic. It is closed during nesting season though, usually February through September, so pay attention to the signage to see if it's closed. hundred species of birds stop in the dry tortugas during the year, making it one of the top places in Florida to bird watch. In fact, this is the only place in the continental United States where the sooty terns and the frigate bird nest. These islands are a layover stop for many migratory birds that are traveling between South America and the United States. There is also camping on the island, and those that do it swear it's one of the best things they've ever done. There are just a few campsites available, and the folks at Dry Tortugas National Park suggest reserving your spot a year in advance. You do have to bring everything you need with you. There's not even running water, but you will be rewarded with a memory that will be seared in your brain forever. The sound of stillness. A dark sky lit up like you've never seen before. Tropical breezes and gentle waves lapping the shore. While a trip to Dry Tortugas National Park requires some preparation and some planning, the experience is one that you will never forget. Thanks for watching Shore Me Some More. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking at the shores, outdoors, and more.